So if both of you would like to introduce yourselves, we have two very accomplished artists here to have a look at Series D. I'm David Soper. I've um, been painting for more years than I care to remember. Uh, my name is uh, Bogus Stopnicki, you probably know me best as Bochun. Mm -hmm. I'm painting since 2005 and yeah, you probably know, know a lot of my works. <laughs> yeah. So what we have here is Series D. Uh, we've been working on this for, I've been working on this personally for five years and um, it's our set of dry brushes. So if you'd like to take a look, take the big one out, have a nose, this is what we're dealing with. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm surprised how soft they are. Yeah, they yeah, are really yeah. soft. Yeah, nice and um, very densely packed bristles. I was just going to say that yeah, we've had a few variables when we've been designing them, and it's it's far more complicated than we originally thought actually because if you're designing a dry brush, the length, how densely the bristles mm. are packed, and the bristle material themselves affects how it feels, and you could be changing one when you need to change the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, like I already like the way they they look, like the shape, the yeah. the fact that they are round. Uh, completely round and had this like a tiny a little bit rounded tip yeah. and short hair and also the fact that they are soft because like the the main like I use mostly uh, uh, dry brush like uh, the stippling stippling mm -hmm. style uh, technique for which I prefer very much the softer mm -hmm. uh, softer type of hair to to like build up uh, to make the texture not appear too strong to yeah. to mm -hmm. Relevant, like I want a really smooth finish, and with the softer hair, you can uh, you can achieve a very smooth finish. Like yeah. you do, you get like a minimum of texture. It's, it's the danger, isn't it, with dry, with dry brushing? It, it, it's quite easy to build up too hard and too great in your texture. It too is, quickly. it is. But it's also like yeah. I, what I like with dry brush and stippling is that you can control uh, a lot of it depending on how much paint you apply on the brush, how, and also like uh, depending on the type of brush, uh, like uh, how soft or hard like uh, the bristle is, then you can really control well if you've got like a strong, very strong texture, like uh, for the style, like for bases, for, or if you if you achieve like the very very smooth like transition, almost like in glazes and yeah. like, Layering. You can do very similar stuff. It's, you can almost uh, you, like replicate airbrush with it. Yeah, mm. I think so. I think mm. the techniques go, the techniques go to better together a lot better than people think. Yes. Um, and it's it's difficult with I think how people have been taught to dry brush, which results in very maybe chalky. Mm. Yeah. Like it, it's probably overly grainy. Yeah, yeah. And that, there's a there's yeah. a place for that, and there's a use for building up the texture, but. Actually, you can be using a, a smooth wash because washes are, are beautiful in transitions and they affect volume. And that can be doing in your negative space what your dry brushing is doing it on the raised areas. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. Like it's uh, like the, the basics of dry brush is exactly the same uh, usually as people use airbrush, just building up like the the highlights the on one on top of another on the darker areas yeah. and build up toward mm -hmm. light. So you can do the same with dry brush. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and then combining dry brushing with other techniques as yeah. well. It isn't you know it doesn't sit in splendid isolation. Yeah. So dry brushing and then glazing and stippling yeah. and dry brushing again. For sure, like I use all of those yeah. techniques as well. I just like especially for those large areas, I would like 80% of the work done with dry brush and then like finish with, with yeah. whatever I want if I want to apply some tiny amounts of nuance of color and then some freehand de details on top of it to finish it off but like the, f the fact that you can build up everything with dry brush and then just use like those final touches to, to finish it up it's, it's really great mm -hmm. that's why I love this technique so when you're when you're approaching image you already touched on it but do you do you have a sequence that you tend to go through? Yeah, yeah. I always follow the same sequence. I start from base coating black always. Mm -hmm. uh, then I start from applying a very dark base coat, which is almost always cold in hue. So usually I use very dark blues or dark greens, sometimes dark purples. Mm -hmm. And then I work usually towards uh, warmer highlights, which builds up like naturally the color contrast from uh, from cold to warm without having to apply a lot of more nuance and tones mm -hmm. throughout. This is just like the uh, the basic thing, like building up uh, both light and color contrast. And then on top of that, uh, I add like additional. Sometimes I use uh, I use multiple. Uh, mixes of highlights yeah. for example of different tones i use like the cold one the warm one neutral one and then maybe others some other type as well mm -hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, I always start from from black and then work towards like the wall. Mm -hmm. And do you you just put in whether you're dry brushing or glazing or layering? You, you use those techniques within that kind of color color yeah. sequence. You just use them whenever you like, or do you tend to start off like I'm going to begin with dry brushing and then I'll move on to something no, else? No, so I always start with dry brushing, and I sometimes like I use other techniques like. Uh, like glazing, layering, traditional techniques, like uh, to finish off like the area, like uh, when the when the when the entire area is painted, uh, the highlights and shadows are built, like the nuanced tones. Then I sometimes use some other techniques as well. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, for smaller models, you need yeah. to use a lot more like of those traditional standard the techniques ones, because yeah. yeah, they are just too small. Like you can't really do use uh, true dry brush mm -hmm. on a very small <laughs> model. But for for a large area like that, I would use only dry brush. Okay. Even I could, and then some freehand details. I wouldn't even use glazes at all. Oh, wow. Just stipple in uh, with dry brush uh, a little bit of nuance. Just uh, use dry brush and stippling for the same uh, for the same purpose as I would use glaze. Otherwise. Okay. So you're you're going. You're not just going. Um up, you're going backwards and forwards, it's a more a organic bit, process. A little bit, yes. A little bit, yes. I tend to start like simple from just building up the highlight and then add a little bit of stuff when it's like when I see how it how it uh, turns out. Amazing. How about you, David? Do you when oh. you when you're using dry brushing on the model, do you use it? Do you have like do you love it for metallics, for skin? Do you have a particular area where you like it or do you use it on everything? I, I, it really depends on the model, to be honest. I like, we use it for different things on different models, yeah. and sometimes that, that's just my whim. Yeah. Um, I mean, very often all my bases will be dry brush, nearly okay. always, all, all the groundwork. But uh, metallics, I, I love to dry brush metallics okay. and, and then use it with um, when you can. glazing, <laughs> yeah. yeah, glazing and washes, and then almost building up like a, almost like a lacquered effect, of building layers of, mm -hmm. of some dry brushing uh, and then some glazing and some washes, and then a little bit more dry brushing okay. and the glazing, and it, it can really build up a lovely sort of patinated finish. Um, if I'm using dry brushing on something like a base, I'll yeah. probably go in with, with a base colour, which um, usually it's warm actually. My, ba my base colours are usually warm, which is yeah. an interesting <laughs> that's difference. A, that's a difference. Um, I may then hit it with a bit of a wash just, yeah. to, just to get some sort of gross overall shadows in, and then I'll dry brush the living daylights out of it. Okay. Um, and then go back in with a little bit of back and forth with washes, um, make a little bit of stippling or glazing, and then usually finish up with a final very light dry brush, okay. um, just to really make that texture sort of pop. How important is the the actual layer? Because you're starting off with a smooth model, mm -hmm. whether it's plastic or resin or whatever, it, w it will have its own textures. But how important is it that you are adding and like another three dimensional aspect to it? Is that part yeah. of it for you? Very much. Um, I, I mean, that's one of the things I love about dry brushing mm -hmm. because sometimes especially with plastic or resin models, they're almost too smooth. Yeah. And that's great if you want smooth areas. That's, yeah. you know, smoothness is a texture too. But, you know, sometimes just painting a texture, um, it, it can look very painted if there's no yeah. physical texture there. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, you create that illusion and it can be very effective. But it's what dry brushing gives you, it actually gives you a degree of physical texture on the mm -hmm. surface, that, yeah. that subtle soft grain. Um, there's nothing quite like it, and then yeah. because then when you if you then hit it with things like glazes, you know you, you get that the paint starts to sort yeah, of you can't really do it with airbrush. No, the same, no. The same technique. Yeah, the, exactly. The, the the fact that you can bring out the texture even on flat areas and then control the level of texture, the yeah. grain of it. So that's that's really great. Yeah. And, and and it's great. And, you know, again, it's great. You, you get that lovely contrast of a dry brushing next to an area where you've painted it very smoothly. Mm. Each one makes mm -hmm. the other one look better. Yeah, you know, the smooth looks smoother because it's next to something rough. Yeah, exactly. In, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to teach two of my painting heroes how I dry brush. <laughs> um, so this is the way that we've devised um, Series D to be used. It's a dry brush. You can use it in a um, like myriad ways. However you like, dry brushing is an extremely flexible technique, but this is kind of the way that we have approached it. And there's also some stuff here that I think probably is, is new news to both of you, which you may or may not like. We'll, we'll find out, I guess. So um, the first thing that people may notice when they look at a Series D box is there's actually two things here. We've got our brush cleaner and preserver. That's our conditioner. That's fantastic. I'll uh, just pull on the wipe of your brushes. The second thing is this, which is a dampening pad. and. Um, when I say dampening, when we're talking about dry brushing, that's, mm -hmm. that's probably a confusing thing for people, but actually there's a fundamental thing that we think we can bring to the table as far as dry brushing goes. Um, 
which is introducing moisture throughout the process of dry brushing. So, yeah, and just a little bit of it. So yeah, just a tiny you bit. You want to break mm -hmm. the effect. Yeah. So we've already um, we've done some base coating here, and both the guys have. Would you say you're stippling? How would you uh, describe it? Yeah, I'm I'm mostly stippled. Yeah, to get a base coat. The way the way yeah. I I'll, I usually do, I start from stippling. Then when I remove most of the paint from the brush, I just uh, I use like st standard strokes to to like apply the remain the remaining paint throughout mm -hmm. the the entire area. Yeah, they so always start from stippling. So it similar, just gives you that even coverage. Yeah. yeah. So first layer is going down now. Um, this is, I guess you might call it an overbrush because I'm trying to put down quite a lot of paint at this point. And um, the way that you use the dampening pad in this process is I'm going down with a blue gray and I'll take my paint from my palette. I'll remove it on my palette, which is textured. Um, and it's very important to see how the paint leaves the brush at this point. Yeah, I use the paper towel for mm -hmm. the same yeah. purpose. Or back of your hand, anything, yeah. mm -hmm. no one's different. So once I've got an amount of paint leaving that I'm happy with, which is quite a lot for dry brushing in this case, working my way over the model. And then at the point at which there's not enough paint leaving the brush, rather than going back and getting more paint, mm -hmm. I tap it here, test it again, because you, you've just dampened the brush. And then you end up with the same effect coming, but it's with more dilute paint. Mm. So you actually end up with this, um, a softer dry brush yeah. at yeah. this stage because your paint isn't as grainy. Yeah, because like yeah, the the thicker the paint is, the stronger the texture. Exactly. Gets. And that, that sometimes that's a good thing. Mm. Sometimes it's a bad thing. But if you are yeah. looking to just hit edges in particular, I really like this technique. So this is when I'm dry brushing. I tend to have two lines of paint and I drag them together. Yeah. And besides, it helps you to clean. The brush. As I can see, so that's one of the things of yeah. dry brushing when the paint starts to dry on the on the bristles, and then you 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 either stop clean that one or you change yeah. to another brush. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I I just usually use a few brushes for to make it faster and not to or use you or use the same brush throughout the entire area. This way, I pre mix all yeah. the all the mixes on my palette just to not waste time on applying them. Exactly. Yeah. So um, now with the dampening pad, I should be able to see this coming into use. Now, this is fairly speedy. Um, you could take more time, you could take less time, you could do whatever you like, but at this point... Yeah, but but like really for the base coat and the, for the first area, there's yeah. no need to spend a lot of time. That's why you use dry brush to make those yeah. stages quick. So this, um, it also allows for less physical application if, if that's if that's the thing and what you're doing. If you want to mm -hmm. be, I mean, you can hold your brush at the end um, or do it more gently. Um, mm -hmm like this, but with the brush more damp, it does open up quite a lot. Or you can be really, really physical yeah. with only a mm -hmm. tiny amount of leaving. Um, so I am incapable of doing this technique without a textured palette close to me. Um, everyone develops their own preferences with stuff like this, but I cannot, um, I'm, this is where I make sure that I don't make any mistakes, mm -hmm. basically. So dry brushing is actually a very forgiving technique, I believe, generally, if you do this, because at this point you're, you're cutting back your capability yeah. to have a, a nasty surprise. Yeah. Our brushes are round, so you get less nasty surprises anyway, because you can use them from any direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually yeah, and you need to remove triggers. like uh, that a little bit of paint at least from yeah. the brush before you before you if start. You, if you got too much paint on, that's yeah. when you get that streaky effect. Yeah, that's the that's the another reason why I start from using steepling because then I I don't apply too much paint in some areas. Yeah. I just apply mm -hmm. most of it uh, in a controlled limited area, and then when there is very little left, there is no no danger of applying too much. So here we go. We're nearly there for this one now. Um, sometimes if I was finishing with a white, I would um, I would change brush if I wanted the last stage of white to be the whitest white mm -hmm. that I could. Um, but this one I don't. But on this texture, it should pick it out beautifully. Yeah. And it's like the if, if, if you've got the texture like that, it's just an ideal thing for a dry brush. Oh, because absolutely. The, yeah. This technique will just naturally put the light where it should be. Okay. Leave shadows where it should be as well organic painting. Um, we can see our brush there, it doesn't look yeah. nearly like, I mean we're finishing on a white which is helpful but mm -hmm. we started with the very dark there grey. Isn't, yeah. mm. There barely... isn't a lot of paint left there. No. Um, so the brush now, if we were looking to move on to another area of the model, 
or you wanted to continue dry brushing, or you wanted to use another color that you didn't want to um, contaminate, mm -hmm. you're actually in a better position yeah. at this point to do that. One more layer of white. So the pad's useful because when you get to the end, that, that, that nothing more is coming off that. No. You're not adding any more paint to the brush, but no. you're just getting every last little bit of paint you've loaded on that brush. Exactly. So on, the, yeah. the process for cleaning and using is actually very similar. Um, and it just extends that, that life expectancy. There you go, hitting the edges. Actually, I do want to get into the darker bits and get a bit of texture on these. Do you guys always use the biggest brush that you can when dry brushing? Or yeah, like how I usually do. Yeah. Yeah, probably a, bit, a, a medium size for me. I mean, I, I tend to work on mm -hmm. smaller models anyway. Yeah. But within within the frame of the area you've got, are you always trying to use the largest brush? Yeah, because why not? It just makes it mm -hmm. faster. Yeah. You get. I mean, you get that. You you don't too small a brush. Yeah. I usually use smaller for like the final, like building yeah. up highlights for the final stages because they are more, you get more precision with yeah. them. But for the first few stages, yeah. All right. And maybe, maybe with those, I wouldn't even go to smaller ones. I don't know. I need to test them. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the subject of testing, we yeah. are pretty much doing this. That's a fast job, but um, this is this is what we've designed them for. I've spoken about the flexibility yeah. of them, but and, uh, yeah, and I would like to love to test them on the flat area <laughs> with the stippling. How right. it goes. So that's mm -hmm. that's basically what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. mm. Adding something to my painting heroes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very quick. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's lovely soft dry brushing. Yes, yeah. it's, it's got a subtlety to it. Yeah, because of the little yeah. bit of water and probably yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's that's how the brush well, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's how the brush ends up. So it's just basically clean, mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, obviously, I've done a quick version. These guys yeah. are going to go in with their own take on it. But um, mm -hmm. that's Perfect. I wanted to demonstrate why this exists. Mm. Um, I've never come across that. Yeah, before, so. I don't think other yeah. people have. <laughs> yeah. um, there's plenty of brush lickers out there while they're they're using normal paints, but we don't feel oh. there's a reason not to introduce it here. Mm. So um, grab a brush, guys, and have whichever one you like. Oh yeah. Okay, this one will be fine. Yeah. Perfect. If you want to like be on a different part of it and rock on that. <coughs> what I'll do is I'll just I'll leave that one running. We yeah, so yeah, I use the the paper towel for the same yeah. the same reason to remove the excess and, and I will use mostly stippling for mm. this because it's flat areas. Mm. I start from just applying. And I started from very cold base mm -hmm. coat, a very dark blue, and now I'm applying a warmer brown. Mm -hmm. If you, is this brown like even though it's warm? Have you chosen to use one that's not too warm? Yeah, at this it's like so when you if you can look at this palette, this is something like in between. Sure. Like this one would be very warm. I, yeah. I chose like the highlights very warm on purpose just to show like the uh, technique, like to Perfect. extreme of the technique how you can. Okay, so now I can see by the way I applied the paint that most of it has been used. Yeah, really nice. And because the brushes are round, you get like a very yeah. even, like symmetrical uh, mm -hmm. pattern when yeah. you stipple. That's why you want round brushes for the yeah. stippling. Yeah. Do you guys, um, do you ever dry brush like yes. this? Yeah, but uh, I, I do it only when uh, there's very little paint left. Okay. What stages are you going to? Like that, like when there is very little okay. left. Then and that's can, best for picking up yeah. edges, mm. I guess. It is, it is, yeah. But you, but you need to have very little paint left on the brush, otherwise you will make smearing. Yeah, you will smear it. Oh, you, David, what stage are you at? Okay, well, I've, I've got a brown base coat here. Um, I'm just doing a bit oh, of sort of fun. Use this. <laughs> soil, sort of rocky, soily okay, texture. Yeah. I, I usually like to use a a warm base coat for that and then work over that with sort of grey okay. tones and I've got a, so it's a really greeny grey actually, it's kind of, it's a colour I've just started experimenting with and then just go in, and I always go in really cautiously mm. okay. <laughs> just to see what's happening yeah. <laughs> um, because you can always add a little bit more yeah. but if you go too far you, you've got a bit more work on your hands to start. You do get to learn the model nicely with dry brushing don't you, like it's, you're 
you're picking up on the personality of the areas that you're painting and you, yes. you might pick up on things that you wouldn't have if you were just popping down something flat with a, a base case or whatever. And you already go, I, I want this texture because mm -hmm. you, you can see quite a lot of texture in this stage but when I will apply it more more uh, the next layer of highlights mm -hmm. you will get you will only have a little bit of this texture and okay. it will like add to uh, to the contrast as well so so I focus on like uh, to, to apply the highlights in the middle and leave like the uh, the areas around like darker with this mm -hmm. blue shining a little bit through the paint. Are they behaving how you guys were expecting them to behave? The dry brushes. I mean, what? Do yeah, you... the, as as far as I can see now, yeah, they are just just perfect for the stippling, and that's what I'm most interested in. Like uh, brushes for stippling because they they are very hard to come by. <laughs> mm. Yeah. What are you, David, as a professional stippler? As a professional, I, I your stippling's very different. Though, yeah, my, <laughs> I think this is the thing when I, I talk about stippling, I'm actually talking about something really different. Pointillism. Oh yeah, pointillism. Painting with dots, really. Yeah, yeah um, but I do this. Yeah. I do this as well, but yeah. Uh, yeah. This this sort of this this um yeah that, that's a different sort of application of stippling. I mean, I, I always <laughs> end up with very messy hands, but I, I tend to actually always, yeah because I actually I get a feel for it then. I, yeah, well, you've got you've got a, a textured. A textured palette there, and it dries out your paint really fast as mm. well. But the the rounded end is working really mm -hmm. nicely. It's, yeah, it, it suits that that slight it's sort of the, rounded. The point is not to like not too sharp. Yeah, so. that's it. You, you don't. You don't with a, a square-ended brush, yeah. you've got those corners, and often yeah. they can actually, in, you're inadvertently applying mm -hmm. more pressure yeah. at the corners. You get most paint at the corners, actually, yeah. not the, in the middle of, of yeah. your That's it, and you, you, can get all, you can begin mm -hmm. to get a bit streaking yeah. if you're not careful when that, when that happens. So, so yeah, this shape is perfect it, it, for it's this technique. even pressure on yeah. the whole okay. surface of a brush. You're going for, like, it, it's an organic technique, isn't it? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Why would you use something that has a definite finish if you're trying to but it's, it's, a very, do the work it's a very three-dimensional technique because I, I I tend to find you know I will be moving that yeah. brush at different angles oh. on you know in relation to the surface I'm dry brushing. Mm -hmm. So to have a, a brush that is sort of rounded in the end. Now I will start with the next layer on top of it. And you're using the same brush. I use the same brush this. for the entire because the other the color just progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I would use uh, this will be like the final highlight and those will be like nuances tones okay. which I will mix. This is proof that there are multiple ways to try. Which I sat down and speed pa speed painted my way through a base as if I was painting something for an army. Yeah, but you need really a quick. different way for a flat area yeah. than for like a textured area like yeah. this one, where it's yeah. you want like the paint to uh, set on the edges, yes. and there are a lot of edges here, not so much. Here you use it more like you would use an airbrush. Yeah. So you just build up the highlights. That's looking beautiful already. I think mean, this thing isn't it. You you adapt the technique mm -hmm. according on what you're painting, what you're wanting yeah. to achieve with that painting. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the same every time. Yes. Yeah. You know, this this is perhaps one of the problems that you know this idea that there's a right and a wrong way to do something, and mm -hmm. there, there might be good and bad ways of doing things. And no, there is no right and wrong. Yeah. Because like there are like. Uh, mm, ways that are more suitable for some some areas but if you can achieve the same result in different ways that's yeah, all the yeah. better yeah i'm sure you guys get it when you use the word dry brushing particularly when it's not on a base it's on a on a different area of a model you might be met with the skepticism or yeah well i i, I think it's often that that idea that dry brushing is a very a very basic technique, mm, yeah. or a beginner's can be, technique. But there is nothing wrong with basic, basic yeah, techniques. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a it's a core technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those sorts of just yeah, fundamental techniques. Just I, I actually yeah. like my techniques to be simple, why not? Yeah. If you can yeah. get good results with simple technique. So 
So if you guys are using metallic paints, do you change how you use the dry brushes? Is it the same? I change a little bit. I use less stippling and more of the traditional like mm -hmm. dragging through. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. But uh, other than that, not really. No. I work in the same way, starting from dark, going toward light. Okay. And then applying nuance. And do you tend to eat? You don't use dry brushing in shadows or stippling in shadows as like not as I, much. I do or sometimes. I reapply it a little bit at the end, but mm -hmm. I try to work from shadows to highlights. Yeah. Just it's a lot better with the dry brush because yeah. it builds naturally. Yeah, I I I'll, I'll tend to um, so you can see highlight with dry brushing. There are just those are just two layers of dry brush, like starting from cold and going towards warmer. Lovely. And starting and trying to place like the highlight in the center of those of those areas. So similar in a similar way, I would use an airbrush actually. Yeah. And then now for the final. So for this area layer, I would probably want less paint, mm -hmm. so I remove more of it. And the nice thing is also that it will mix with this uh, previous highlight that I already had the some brush. left. Yeah, yeah. In the brush, so I can I can get like even two or three tones lighter. Yeah. So with the shadows, David, if you're mixing it up with, mm -hmm. with with all the techniques, do you is it you you'll do a load of dry brushing and then maybe you're knocking back your shadows with glazes? Yes, or I'll, I'll go in your preference. Yeah, almost, almost well, always when I dry brush, I will, I will then go over it with some sort of glazing. Okay. Um, sometimes quite heavily, really. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if I, if I I might tend to start off with more of a mid tone base mm -hmm. coat, uh, dry brush it up lighter. Yeah. Then go in, go in and build in some some depth into the shadows and some you know add some color nuance. Okay. Um, like in a lot of my bases, I, I'll have those sort of grey rocky bases, but I'll often go almost orange. Yeah. Down into recesses with my with my browns go yeah. really warm. Mm. Um, but that that tends to be a well that that final stage almost be like a wash. Yeah. Very carefully applied, a very controlled wash. And when you're if you let's say it's on a, an armor plating or something like that, mm. and you've dry brushed all of it. In your glazing, do you glaze over a lot? Do you glaze in the shadows? No, it, it, it will always be a very controlled in in controlled areas. Okay. Um, very, very dilute, but thinly applied, and, and carefully building up to get a, a depth of um, color saturation yeah. and and a, a sort of a darkness of the shadows mm -hmm. on top of that dry brushing. And then and then maybe go back over it again. Yeah. And dry brush just to you know if I if I feel I've glazed down too much. Yeah. You can go back to the forest, can't you? That's I, I do. I mean, I, I think that's the thing about painting. It, it, it sometimes is a very ordered process, but it, inevitably it always ends up going back and forth and yeah. shuffling mm -hmm. all, all over the yeah. place. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Just that constant sort of adjusting and adapting. You know, it's, it's a very organic process. Getting there now. Just it's really these are working really well with the, the circular action. Yeah. Especially mm -hmm. when I'm doing bases, I, I tend to do that sort of. I'm dragging the brush across the surface, yeah. but it's it's in quite a circular action because I'm I'm wanting to sort of really pick out the texture. I'm, I'm not particularly trying to um, paint this as well. It's lit from one direction. Yeah, of course. That, that might come later. I mean, yeah. like if I want if I want that on the base, then as I'm adding in the shadows, I might start to paint them in that way. And then obviously for another level of dry brushing later on, I might be a bit more controlled, but um, this sort of stage is very much about- You're looking, for, you're looking to, to suggest volumes yes. globally, not- Yes, on, yeah, this, yeah, this initial stage is very much really just sort of building it up. It's, um, I think the softness of the brushes is really nice. I think that, yeah. that's um, really helping. I think that's one of the problems with it. You know, traditional dry yeah, brushing. I, I would prefer softer brushes, uh, exactly, yeah. for the dry brush, for sure. So you guys, in in the past, or I don't know how it affects how you think with these, do you, will you work with the same brush all the way, if you can, or do if you... If I can, for sure, yeah, yeah. yeah I love it. If I can. So let's try your sponge. Hold the shape. We need that. Yeah, that's a very, very technical application here. So obviously, it's up to you what you think mm -hmm. is. When it comes down to it, everyone just needs to touch something on their foot, like yeah. whether that's yeah, a brush going to a mouth. Or, even. Yeah. Just getting that little bit of fun. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Which I like. 
base coat, three layers of highlights, and you build up all of those. That's looking beautiful. Yeah, all of those highlights already, and you've got a lot of contrast simply because I used a dark blue base yeah. coat and then very warm mm -hmm. highlights, and now I can use like nuance. It's beautiful because you're adding something that wasn't yeah. there. Yeah, which is. And you've got a little bit of this texture. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, not too much. I don't. Yeah. I didn't want too much. I want. I, I love texture. I mean, but mm -hmm. you don't want. Uh, you all don't, always don't want heavy texture. Yeah. Okay, so I probably wash this brush now. <laughs> Because I won't be using it, I will be using a smaller one now. Well, can we swap you then? This one? Or uh, even smaller if possible. Smaller. I can use the small one to test it, it will be fine to apply some of the nuances. Yeah. The baby brush. The baby, baby brush, yeah. <laughs> I can clean this one up. Okay. While you wait. Oh, sure. Thank you. Now I will add just a little bit of this very strong red brown. Some nice nuances. Between the shadows. Cleaning the brush, which is exactly the same process as me using the brush, mm -hmm. just entirely the yeah, same process yeah. on this palette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just with a bit of cleaner. The nice things about having paler bristles is you know better when you've cleaned the brush. Obviously, yes. you can see it coming onto this, but um, mm. it's far easier to tell. And actually, um, there we go. In this yeah. already? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. um they clean really Perfect. really nicely. Oh yeah, I really love the small one as well. Very nice. Get very smooth application. Hmm. It's really nice. Oh, this is gonna look pretty. You also dry quite fast with this hair, so. Mm -hmm. That's been dunked, but it's good to go. Okay, so the guys have tried out the brushes. I've got some pretty beautiful work, quite fast actually. I'm not sure if they behaved exactly how you're expecting. How, like, David, have you found it? Um, a little bit surprised actually. Did it? It's so much softer. I mean, yeah. we, I think we said when we first looked at them, the bristles are quite soft. Well, yeah. I've actually found the dry brushing is really soft. It, the colours have gone down very smoothly. Um, the transitions there are really soft and smooth. I mean, I was blown away when I, I was experimenting with metallics because I yeah. always like to dry brush with metallics. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, it, it doesn't need an awful lot more work doing to it to yeah. make it presentable. I mean, I'd, I normally work in a lot more over my dry brushing, yeah. and here I, I might do that to add colours and nuances. I wouldn't need to do it to soften the blending. Amazing. Really impressive. Though. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Like, the main thing I tried for uh, with those brushes, the larger one, was the stippling technique, and uh, I find that they are just perfect for them because, like, of the... Uh, the amount of hair, the thickness of it, and uh, and the fact that they are soft is also very helpful because I usually like to use soft brushes for stippling in order not to get the texture too strong yeah. and to be able to blend very well the next layers of highlight. And uh, for the smallest brush, it was even uh, it was really surprising for me how soft it was. It was like almost uh, uh, like a glazing brush, yeah, yeah. almost, mm. uh, but with the dry paint. I had to constantly remind myself not to push it too strongly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, but yeah, twenty it, years of elite mm -hmm. dry brushing experience. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like usually, uh, the brushes that I use like require more, uh, more force or emphasis in mm -hmm. applying the paint, and this one was just like, shh, it was yeah. just so smooth and delicate. So yeah, amazing. It needs a little bit for me uh, to adjust to to yeah. those brushes, but uh, yeah, definitely, I'm very very pleased with the result and how they how they behave. Amazing. Um, I mean, was that the biggest area of surprise that you found? Was there anything else that jumped out, or like, was there anything that was a shock? I don't know if it was a shock. I, I, I do, I do. I mean, certainly, 
I think it's like needing that lighter touch was the thing that I sort of thought, whoa, you know, but yeah. years of dry brushing, I'd, I'd all, it's going to become like a muscle memory thing. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I started off as I, I knew and very quickly thought, I can see what could happen here if I just lighten my touch a bit. Yeah. Suddenly I'm getting this very smooth, almost like a glaze. I yeah, mean, yeah, although exactly. I'm dry brushing, I'm, I'm actually laying down a very thin mm -hmm. layer of colour here. Yeah. But with a dry brushing technique. What about the shape? Did the shape affect how you use them or is it just what you mm. do? No, the shape is actually uh, uh, the way that I want to use like dr uh, brushes for this particular technique, just that this brush has this shape already. It's, yes. like, yeah. it's really very difficult to find a brush that will be good for this technique because it either it's too flat or has too sharp point or the shape isn't correct and this one just uh, is is round, is all around, and that's perfect for stippling because you've got you achieve this symmetrical uh, pattern very easily with it, and the fact that it's just so uh, delicately rounded uh, that distributes the paint like uh, in the center and then uh, lighter on the on the outside. So it helping you fade. Yeah, it, oh. it naturally helps you to fade, and uh, it just makes this entire process so easy and intuitive, and like it just paints almost uh, by itself. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I'm glad you both enjoyed it. We'll, we'll take the pieces that we've had done here, the actual pieces we've done in real time whilst testing out these brushes. You'll be able to see them on the campaign. And um, that's it. <laughs>